Okay, hello everyone, and of course, annyeonghaseyo. Um, I'm Michael Smith, and with my colleague, David McKirk, we're going to talk you through a small-scale research project that we did about using VR in English language learning. Okay, so today we'll start with the introduction, uh, leading into the rationale for CAL as a medium of task-based language teaching. Then we'll move on to defining VR, the advantages of VR, and the hardware and software were used during this study. From then, we'll talk about our method, uh, limitations of our method and suggestions for future practice. Then we'll have a review at the end. Okay, so the rationale for CAL as a medium of task-based language teaching. So, as noted by Thomas and Reinders in 2010, TBLT and CAL share a sequence of concept, uh, conceptual antecedents comprising project-based, content-based, and experiential learning, as well as constructivist and social constructivist thought. Um, so, as we see here, uh, CAL, Chappelle 2001, that their criteria for CAL task appropriateness mirrors quite closely Lambert's uh, similar criteria for TBLT. Uh, so learners should actively exploit schemata to achieve learner-specific community of requirements. This more or less correlates with meaning focus for Chappelle and learning by doing by Lambert. Likewise, uh, establish internal syllabi to navigate a given la language generation context and participate in tasks applicable to the community of requirement of participants, fit with learner fit, individual development, authenticity and relevance, respectively. Hi, I'm David, and let me talk about the characteristics that define VR. Um, chiefly, we're talking about uh, virtual worlds, uh, environmental interactions, visual and tactile feedback, and having a, a high sense of immersion. But what this means for educational VR, um, there are some specific uh, advantages which I'm going to outline now. OK, so the first key tenet of uh, VR is collaboration, which might, you might not think of it as immediately apparent with the VR, but um, we're talking about more uh, network based situation so either through the internet or through a local area connection or um, even just in the same room but essentially um, in these situations VR has been shown to increase peer-to-peer -peer and uh, students to content uh, interactions um, we'll talk about a bit why this is the case in a second but um, it also leads to um, self-reflection and motivation to participate. And um, in a Vygotskyan social constructivist manner, uh, anxiety is reduced in peer supported environments through scaffolding. Um, the second key advantage of educational VR is learner autonomy. Um, and in the context of VR driven task-based language. Um, it's this self-determination as an inherent characteristic as learners generate contextual learning processes via an active negotiation and manipulation of, of the virtual environments. Um, it's also suggested that uh, since VR and autonomy kind of go hand in hand, um, this is very effective in creating learner-centered environments. And um, this is also, um, there's also been uh, studies that show that um, higher self-efficacy amongst um, some participants um, is, in, is uh, helped by um, a preference for virtual learning over traditional tasks. A third key advantage is contextual learning. And given its multimodal nature, um, VR can balance language acquisition as implicit, meaning it's unconscious, and explicit or selective uh, learning. Um, and in the case of virtual reality learning environments, 
Um, learners encounter visual, auditory or tactile stimuli, allowing vocabulary to be absorbed within settings and reinforce their cognitive means of acquisition. So, for example, if you think of a, um, a three-dimensional representation of an airplane, it can be kind of touched with haptic feedback and controllers, heard using headphones. Um, and this allows learners to observe and interact with features that may help them learn specialised vocabulary. Um, there's also a, uh, a kind of circumstantial learning um, helped by VR through uh, what Hansen and Shelton call a sequence of cognitive restructurings. Um, and this is the representational to the conceptual. And this allows learners to independently observe and evaluate um, the immediate conditions of their input. And so this allows them to kind of see the casual relationships between action and result. Um, and this implies that students generate knowledge more effectively in VR. OK, so the last key point for educational VR is presence. Um, and we. It's defined as presence because the term immersion um, for this kind of technology, uh, we feel kind of understates how, what it's really like to use it. Um, because it, what presence um, does is it represents a heightened sense of absorption within a virtual space. And it's to the point where the participant believes they are actually situated within the learning environment. Um, and there's been a study shown that the impact of presence on a virtual, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the impact of presence on virtual language acquisition um, actually increased uh, test response accuracy um, because of the perceived authenticity of the VR setting. Um, also, um, there's another study that's shown uh, memory recall um, may be enhanced through um, heightened concentration from these highly immersive contexts. Um, and this is what allows, uh, the, as I mentioned before, the cognitive, uh, higher cognitive processing uh, during language learning to take place. Um, and as an example, please look at this video of a uh, snooker player uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan as uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan um, having a go in VR. I'm going to put it on you first. Welcome to virtual reality. What's it like, Ron? Ah, oh, it's mental. So those are the controls right wow. there. Wow. What are you going for? The six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. That has freaked me. Right Only out. you could lean on no, a virtual I reality these. table. Can I take these off? That is weird. So as for the hardware, um, the study utilized a single uh, Oculus Quest, which is a self-contained VR gaming headset. Um, and unlike previous iterations of the product line, um, it doesn't need any connection to a PC. So it's much uh, easier to use and set up. Um, and the other thing is there are no cables um, attached to anything, so that doesn't it doesn't restrict movement. Um, what it uses is something called the Oculus Insight tracking system to um, obviously track movements and give user feedback into the virtual space. Um, and but this is regardless of the real world location and play area boundaries. Um, so um, player input is recorded using the uh, touch controllers and um, this allows the users to, amongst other actions, pick up, hold, relinquish objects um, with very realistic uh, precision and a kind of uh, haptic feedback. Um, next, uh, Michael is going to talk about the task implementation and the results. Okay, so in order to engender a collaborative task-based VR experience, it was decided to employ the Oculus Rift in conjunction with the uh, information gap puzzle game, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Um, it should be noted that this game isn't designed specifically for VR, uh, but we thought 
uh, given its information gap nature, it was perfect for what we wanted to achieve. Uh, this is, it's also available in other platforms, uh, consoles, PC, uh, pretty much you know, smartphones, pretty much everywhere. So this software is designed to, uh, to be played with at least two participants, uh, with one player operating the, the Rift tasked with disarming procedurally generated bombs. So this diffuser, uh, as it's called in the game, is assisted by partner experts who communicate the information necessary to successful completion. Uh, this is contained within a bomb diffusal manual, uh, a contextually immersive instruction booklet. So crucially, the modules of each bomb manifest algorithmically, uh, which means it's completely math based, uh, resulting in a myriad of bomb component combinations and the requirement for participants to generate linguistic and problem solving strategies in real time via the rapid and accurate exchange of information. So accordingly, uh, this game serves to enhance the following holistic skills. Function efficiently and strategically as part of a team. Describing, labeling and communicating visual information. Generating questions to elicit feedback. And finally, searching specialized text to look at precise instructions. And now we're going to show you a quick clip uh, of the game being played, it should be noted, these were not our research participants. This was a video we sourced online. I don't know how uh, to you, say you, it. You, it's, you explain it to me and then I understand okay. it. Which one are we at? Which color are we at? is this? I guess this one. Okay. I have double two X's that I think I guessed wrong. I'm not sure. I think you guessed right. Two things is there the double K? The Star, K or A? Which one is the next one? Oh, A, A, A. 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 Yeah. Oh, and then K yeah, and then star. Oh, you died? Yeah. Let's start right, with the there's, wires. There's super dark room. Hello. The yeah. time is ticking. Come on. It's okay. I think you, I, I think you have to cut the last cut one. The last. Okay, so the participant group of this study consisted of three Japanese private university students, uh, one male and two female, all of whom were at the time 19 year old international studies majors uh, obsession english uh, comprehension level recognized as b1 to b2 on the sephra scale so all learners had participated in one full semester of tertiary face-to-face -face english education remember this is pre-covid during which they were exposed to a mixture of oc or communication uh, extensive reading and academic writing classes weekly of the three only one participant had previous experience of VR technology, albeit in a non-educational context. Finally, two of the three reported that they participated in electronic gaming regularly, while a remaining student indicated that she enjoyed video games from time to time. It should also be noted that I was the teacher of the students during that semester. So given the complex information gap nature of uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, in which the disarmament of bomb modules necessitates, uh, amongst other tasks, virtual wire cutting, uh, code breaking, maze negotiation, and password and numbered sequence memorization, uh, it was vital that participants were given adequate time to prepare. So, prior to task implementation, each learner was briefed on the activity, uh, gave informed consent, and it was then provided with a specialized vocabulary module uh, module identification chart, which we can see uh, here, uh, and bomb diffusal manual, before being allocated 10 minutes to orientate themselves to the task. During this time, the instructors prepared a demonstration of the activity to be introduced once students had finished preparation. So, uh, post-demonstration, learners were provided with copies of a keypad identification worksheet and given five minutes to translate and label each of the 27 abstract symbols used during the keypad task, some of which were repeated. Uh, this handout not only facilitated efficient in-game communication of uh, task-critical visual components, but served as a warm-up activity, allowing learners to generate unique and memorable lexical strategies for task completion. Further, this activity conforms uh, specifically to Lambert's concept of supportive performance and focus on form that we discussed earlier in which uh, TBLT activities provide learners opportunities to optimize their own task performance by being provided with uh, time to plan and draw attention to forms that are difficult to acquire incidentally during the forms of cumulative tasks. Uh, during the final phase of test preparation, each participant completed the five minute uh, tutorial of the game, 
with this level consisting of basic orientation tasks, uh, such as navigating the virtual space and fundamental task completion measures, including item manipulation, wire cutting and button pressing. OK, next, uh, here we have some images of the learners uh, completing the activities uh, during our data collection time. So uh, as noted by Aubrey, uh, the cognitive mechanisms that drive task-based interactions involve curiosity-driven engagement with a specific activity, such as solving a problem, which can impact emotional engagement through changes in willingness to interact, attitudes towards a task, and of course, sense of enjoyment. In this vein, findings indicate that VR represents a practical vector for task-based language teaching. Specifically, uh, participants reported a uniformly high degree of satisfaction with the intervention, stating that it was fun on numerous occasions, and that, the, and that the enjoyable and collaborative nature of the activity acted as a key driver of interaction and task completion, reporting that they didn't hesitate to talk, particularly when occupying the role of diffuser. So in this task, uh, the VR task involved participants uh, emotionally to build an intrinsic rewarding uh, experience that, in keeping with flow theory, engendered immersion uh, conducive to higher involvement and improved task performance. The heightened degree of collaboration uh, in which a task was judged to be especially fun because they got to play it together, created a sense of shared belonging. This enhanced group and social identity, creating a more tangible context for the language being acquired and the conditions that drive situated learning. So uh, when asked how the activity impacted their language use, uh, one responder described how they, uh, they had to explain things more clearly and had to listen more carefully because the emotions or faces of her partners were not readily visible. So these statements confirm the heightened sense of immersion or presence uh, experienced by learners within a virtual space. Uh, and to some extent, uh, previous findings by Repetto, Colombo and River, uh, who found a direct correlation between linguistic accuracy and the degree of immersion within a VR environment. Uh, so the impact of cognitive presence was confirmed by all participants who agreed that the experience felt realistic in VR. Uh, moreover, one learner indicated that uh, VR was much better because you felt like you were there in that situation. Further, uh, the presence experienced during collaboration motivated learners to take additional team strategy me uh, measures, demonstrating consistency with uh, Gazotto, who lists applying knowledge for creative uh, problem solving, developing strategies for overcoming obstacles and optimizing performance within constraints as key skills for color gamification. Uh, for example, while not explicitly directed to do so, uh, it was noted that the subjects immediately divided uh, the expert role into two distinct phases. Uh, upon the commencement of a new bomb disposal task, the diffuser would describe the virtual bomb per the, the module identification chart, giving a brief overview of each activity to be completed. At the same time, both experts took notes and located pertinent information in a bomb disposal manual before providing instructions on a rotational basis. So while expert one was directing the diffuser to complete the first module, expert two was researching the next activity and formulating uh, English medium questions that facilitated efficient task completion. So in doing so, the learners adapted their linguistic output, uh, established internal strategies to navigate the language generation context of the game, and demonstrated individual development uh, that, as we spoke about earlier, is recognized an essential, essential factor of effective task-based practice by Lambert. Okay, so uh, when questioned on whether the students believed if VR had a positive impact on their ability to communicate in English, uh, they uniformly agreed that they would prefer to use VR in future ELL. Um, they also felt the immersion felt during these activities would provide beneficial to their authentic uh, language generation contexts. Uh, now, uh, it should clearly be noted that the likelihood of these learners participate in legitimate bomb disposal <laughs> remains uh, extremely remote, one would hope. Uh, however, uh, when we talk about authenticity, uh, the successful navigation of the task uh, necessitated the use of true-to-life communicative skills, uh, including critical thinking, problem solving, uh, P2P negotiation, and English medium reading, writing, listening, uh, and oral communication, which, as we know, are, are contextual, holistic skills. Um, so when we talk about authenticity, it's not necessarily the vocabulary, although obviously that helps, 
when we talk about authenticity, we were ref uh, referring to the actual true to life skills that benefit this learner in their language learning goals. Thank you, Michael. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the limitations and suggestions for uh, future practice. Um, so one of the main things is the cost. And um, at the time of recording, there is a second version of the Oculus Quest, uh, the Oculus Quest 2, um, but it's still uh, $300 or so a piece uh, for the lowest um, version. And that does make class wide usage expensive, to say the least. Um, if you are, if we're talking about one headset per student, um, but with that in mind, we we think a blended learning uh, station rotation model may kind of improve the uh, learning experience of larger groups if uh, we can't get headsets to uh, every student. Um, another uh, limitation is that, as mentioned before, the technology is kind of inherently isolating. Um, meaning instruction is quite difficult. Um, I mean, if you're trying to teach a class where everyone has their uh, vision obstructed and, and they've got headphones on, it's, it does make teaching a bit difficult unless the teacher is also in VR, but even then for the first time, this is probably gonna be difficult. Um, and of course, accidents can and probably will happen. Um, unless you're in a big padded room. So that does limit some of the type of um, actions or experiences that students can do. Um, but what this means is that there will be extensive setup and training uh, needed for uh, learners and teachers. One specific disadvantage with uh, Keep Talking Nobody Explodes is that um, there is a, a presence multiplier that's missing and that is standing up and moving um, because the game is a mostly a, a sitting down experience. So while it's still very immersive and it does induce presence, it could be, it could be better uh, if there was a standing element involved. Um, the second thing is uh, with the headsets is that comfort is an issue um, and with these self-contained headsets like the Oculus Quest that all of the technology is within the headset all the battery the screens everything is all in the one thing and that makes it quite front heavy um, and it, especially if you're a glass uh, if, if you wear glasses it can be quite uncomfortable um, and one thing we have noted is that students uh, worry about their hair and makeup. So, <laughs> it, it, but it's, it's an understandable thing because when you wear this headset for, you know, minutes or, or, or however long, it can really, uh, can really mess things up, shall we say. Um, the last thing, uh, another problem with the VR is that motion sickness can happen. Um, it, it, it does depend on the application or the game, but um, it's usually to do with the, uh, the body's uh, vestibular system. Um, and um, basically, if, if the game is not um, coded correctly, uh, so for example, in some applications with lots of movements, uh, sight is restricted heavily, so it, it looks like you're looking down binoculars, but this helps with uh, motion sickness so there has to be a, a quite a um, a lot of design and thought considerations um, for each uh, game or app i think vr has entered the limelight in the last few months because of covid19 um, since we're all stuck at home um, and as uh, teachers uh, we'd like to connect with our students more and I'm sure students with the teachers and other students. Um, and in that regard, um, I'd like to showcase some other um, VR apps and games that might be useful in that kind of situation. This is um, called Star Trek Bridge Crew and it's a multiplayer game uh, in VR where um, four people have to communicate, work together uh, to pilot uh, the you know, typical 
Star Trek space missions. Um, and I think it could be a really excellent um, communicative uh, activity. This one's called Job Simulator, and it's a game where uh, you're put in various situations and given mini missions. Um, in the picture, you can see they're in a um, convenience store and they have to serve customers, and that means taking their money, uh, making food and cleaning and all sorts of things. This last one is a Google Earth VR, and you could imagine uh, the teacher giving students um, a place to go. Uh, they they can explore the city in virtual reality and then um, have to write a report or give feedback or discuss in groups different uh, cities versus towns and all sorts of things. Okay, everyone, uh, that wraps up our presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, obviously, due to the asynchronous nature of this presentation, uh, we can't really field questions right now. However, uh, if you do have any questions or just like to discuss anything further, please feel free to contact us on our ResearchGate pages here. Okay, thank you very much.